Fixing our refugee system, that is the topic of tonight's byline. Hey Canada, good news, we're about to have fewer crazy refugee claims. Yes, Randy Quaid, I'm looking at you. People who come from the United States and the 26 members of the European Union, plus Croatia, will now have speedy hearings for the refugee claims, and I'm hoping a speedy removal. Personally, I would just stop hearing such claims, but I'm not in charge now, am I? I mean, really, do we honestly think there are real refugees fleeing persecution in Belgium or Portugal today? Well, the refugee industry thinks so. The people that live off our overly generous system think this will put people in harm's way and violate their rights. Here is a quote. The DCO, that's Designated uh, Country of Origin Scheme. The DCO is unfair and violates basic rights contained in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom. Lauren Waldman, President, the Canadian Association of Refugee Lawyers. Well, actually, Mr. Waldman, I think this violates your income and that of your fellow refugee lawyers, and that's why you oppose this. You won't be able to spend years dragging bogus cases through the courts and getting paid to do so. Waldman's not alone, though. The Canadian Council of Refugees is aghast that Germans, Germans will no longer be able to spend years appealing their flake, fake refugee claims to Canada. The whole purpose of our refugee system, they say, the whole purpose of our refugee system is to protect people whose lives and liberty are threatened in their country of origin. Hmm. Really? The only threat to Germans right now comes from their pockets being picked by the bankrupt government of Greece. Let me tell you how crazy our refugee system is being. Crazy is just one used word to describe uh, Randy Quaid. He's a Hollywood actor. I really liked his work in Independence Day. He played this fighter pilot who'd been abducted by aliens and wanted payback. I'm not sure he was acting, but he was good. Well, Quaid was able to claim refugee status in Canada back in 2010. And due to the way the law is written, we had to take his claim seriously. He was wanted by the law enforcement officials of California when he showed up in BC demanding, or pre demanding protection. I mean, why wasn't he just turned around? Because we're required to accept him, and even if he gets turned down, hey, he gets to appeal. Got another story for you that rivals the Quaid one. Tim Bloomfield came to Canada from Britain, got married to his wife back in 2009. Well, later Tim became Tanya, decided he was a woman rather than a man, and Understandably, the marriage broke up. The now former wife's sponsorship of Tim's immigration application was withdrawn, presumably because she wanted to marry Tim and not Tanya. Well, rather than go back to Britain, Tanya decided to stay here in Canada and declare refugee status. Tanya claims she will face discrimination if returned to Britain. Yes, Britain or anywhere else in the European Union. Let me fill you in on something that you may not know. Britain unlike Canada, actually has laws banning discrimination against transgendered people, specifically against transgendered people. In 2008, the British government extended equality laws to cover transsexuals. There's even a registry for transgendered people to have their new gender legally recognized. We don't have that in Canada. I don't think we need it either, but we don't have it. Britain is not a threat to Tanya or Tim, and to claim so is an abuse of our system. We've known these changes were coming for some time now, and now we know exactly which countries they will apply to. I can't wait until they apply to more. There are real refugees, people, real refugees facing persecution around the world. They don't come from Europe, at least not yet. There are refugee camps around the world. There are people facing threats to their lives due to their political beliefs, their ethnicity, or their religion. When these fakers get in the system, they gum it up and they take resources away that could be used for real refugees. These changes should be welcomed by every sensible Canadian. And that's the byline. The shift over from Blackstool. It's what I used to drive the Roger Moores about. And... No, mercy me. I keep forgetting I'm in the colonies. I'm worried that's another refugee case coming to us. Uh, I don't know. It was from Arrested Development. Joining me now uh, is a man that uh, is behind these changes, Jason Kenney, the Minister of Immigration. Uh, Minister, uh, you are a horrible person, according to the uh, refugee industry today, because uh, Swedes can no longer claim that they're persecuted and come to Canada. I know, it's uh, shocking. How, how dare but, you? But, but actually, uh, Brian, they still can. Sorry okay. To, sorry to tell yeah, you. Let, let's fill people in on what the actual changes are, because... As I said, they can still come, but we're going to have fewer crazy claims and they'll be turned around for speedy removal, I hope. How speedy? What, what happens now? A lot faster than, than under the old broken system, which had become so clogged up with fake claims, as you pointed out, 
that it was taking almost two years for asylum claimants to get a hearing at our refugee board. Now, imagine you are a guy who's escaped from a prison in Iran. Yes, you've, you've come to Canada. You've got the scars of torture fresh on your back. I think you should be getting Canada's protection. But, but as you're, soon behind, as... you're behind Randy Quaid and, and Tanya. Exactly. And okay. so we, we give you a, a form, say fill it out, and we'll get back in touch with you in two years. And in the meantime, there are tens of thousands of people in front of you who turn out to be bogus claimants. Two-thirds of the claims in our system are abandoned or withdrawn by the claimants themselves. Uh, or rejected by our fair and generous immigration refugee board. So you're the guy with the scars on your back. You've got to wait for 20, 22 months to get a hearing, to get protection, to get certainty, because there are people coming from the number one source region of asylum claims to Canada right now, the European Union. More than Africa, more than Asia, we get more claims from one EU democracy, Hungary, than we get from China, uh, and, and North Korea and, 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 and Iran. So and in places where people truly are persecuted. So you can still come from one of these safe countries and, and you're nicer than me because I would just tell them, get on your bike and go away. Uh, you're going to say you've got uh, 30 days to get a hearing? Yeah, so right now uh, the process takes, here's the thing, under the current broken system that's ending midnight tonight, the, uh, it takes almost two years to get a hearing. And then if you're a fake claimant, if your claim is rejected, you're able to use all of these, uh, what I call redundant reviews and, and paper-based appeals. It goes on and on for several years, and we're typically not able to remove you until about four, five, or six years into your claim. All that time, most of the, many of these people are on welfare. They've been receiving, uh, until recently, gold-plated federal health care benefits, often social housing and other social benefits. Maybe, Brian, that explains why they make these false claims. Now, in the new system, uh, the, the, the claimants coming from these designated countries, like the European Union, will get their hearing in 30 or 45 days, depending on whether they make their claim at the airport or inland. And, and, and if, they, if, they, if it's deemed that they are not refugees, that they do not have a well-founded fear of persecution, they will then be removed. So we're talking about removing them in a couple of months, rather than several years, and we're also talking about giving a hearing and protection to those real refugees in a couple of months rather than a couple of years. So um, if the Irish have another potato famine, though, are they going to be okay? Because they're on that list, and I know things are, are bad in Ireland right now. Well, you know, I was just in Ireland, and I was inviting Irish to come and immigrate, and that's the point. If Europeans want to come to Canada, they're more than welcome to get in the queue with everyone else. They can come as visitors. If they want to work, they can apply for a work permit. And I made this point when I recently met with Roma community leaders in Hungary. Uh, and I, I said, look, y you know, there actually is a normal legal process. If your folks want to come to Canada, uh, and, and they can apply for a work permit, they can, they can pl apply to immigrate. And, and, and quite frankly, I think what a lot of this happens, the, the bogus claims happen because ringleaders in various communities basically uh, make a profit counseling people on how to come to Canada and abuse our generosity. Another thing I found out when I was in, in Hungary is that many of the people who are false claimants here collecting social benefits, welfare, are doing the same thing back in Hungary at the same time. Many of them leave Canada after abandoning their claims and continue to receive Canadian welfare. You need to understand that 80% of the asylum claims made by Europeans worldwide are made in Canada. 98% of those made by Hungarians are uh, made in Canada and almost none of them turn out to be well-founded. And it's truly amazing that you keep finding out about new ways to game the system. And I know that you have people from different immigrant communities come to you and say, Mr. Kenny, check this out. All the time. You, you won't believe what they're doing now because as you plug one hole, somebody finds another. And this, so where do you expect the next hole to be? Where do you expect the next abuse to be? Because it's going to continue despite all those questioners from the media this morning in your news conference who seemed horrified at the thought that you would ever suggest that somebody might be taking advantage of our generous system. Well, uh, first of all, of course, the, uh, the left-wing uh, special interest lawyers are going to sue the government and, 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 try to, and challenge this law, and, and, and I, be I believe they're wrong. We have an obligation under the Refugee Convention and under our Charter of Rights to provide a hearing uh, to refugee claimants, and if they are in need of protection, give it to them. We're not under an obligation to give people endless years of delays and redundant appeals, especially if they're coming from countries which, in the language of the UN, are not, do not normally produce refugees. The fast-track system that we are creating for these designated country claimants is essentially the same that exists in other Western liberal European democracies. I mentioned this morning, by the way, Brian, yeah. that the EU just won the Nobel Peace Prize 
for its world leadership in the protection <laughs> of human rights. What do these people have against Europe? You know, I, I really have to say, I, when, when I point out that Hungarians, for example, have full unrestricted mobility rights in 27 EU democracies that comply with the highest international norms for human rights, I'm told by some people in your field, in the media, and some of these left-wing interest groups that, oh no, they're, 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 all the European countries persecute certain minorities. Really? Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, Ireland? All I mean, of them, I mean, apparently. what kind of arrogance does it take for the Canadian left to condemn the 27 democracies of the European Union as being uh, rife with, 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 with racist persecution? No country is absolutely safe for everyone all the time. There's always going to be criminal violence, and regrettably, probably in every society, there will always be uh, some degree of uh, uh, some incidents of discrimination against some people and some minorities. We all have to work together to uh, eliminate those things. But so we're not saying all those countries are 100% safe for everyone 100% of the time. But we are saying that there are alternatives. There is state protection. There is mobility rights, and uh, that virtually none of the claims that come here from Europe are well founded. All right. My, my, here's my prediction to you, as I leave you: uh, a, a big spike in refugee claims from France and their 75% tax rate. But maybe I'm wrong on that. We'll see. Send us your thoughts on Jason Kenney's new immigration changes. What do you think of the minister's thoughts? Byline at sunmedia.ca. More to come.